Well, welcome to Wildcat Week. I'm Roger Alcock. The last regular season game for the Lady Wildcats was a trip to Fort Wayne to take on the Cougars of St. Francis. Well, to start off that game, the Wildcats closed the first quarter on an 8-2 run, but they trailed 20-19. The Cougars held a 28-23 advantage early in the second quarter, but a 12-2, excuse me, another 12-2 spurt from Indiana Wesleyan gave them the lead at 33-30. Now, neither team scored a point over the final three minutes of the first half. Well, then moving on to the second half, St. Francis scored the first eight points, taking the lead 38-33. Junior Kelsey Key hit some free throws with less than four minutes left in the third quarter to break a nine minute and 12 second uh, scoreless streak for the Lady Wildcats. But the Cougars scored the final eight points of the fourth quarter, as well as they built a 50 to 40 lead midway through that final quarter. For the Wildcats, senior Carly Cottrell sank a three pointer with 49 seconds left, uh, left in the game. Uh, cutting the lead 55-50, but St. Francis scored the final six points, pulling away with a 61-50 victory. Leading way for the Wildcats was Carly Cottrell. She had a team best 15 points. Senior Jessica Brown and junior Chelsea Winter each added 11 points there. Well, with the regular season coming to a close, the uh, all Crossroads League teams were announced, and for the Lady Wildcats, junior Kelsey, Ski, uh, Kelsey Key excuse me, scored and all Crossroads League first team honor. Also uh, seniors Jessica Brown and junior Chelsea Winter were recognized to the all Crossroads League honorable mention team. Well, I'm now joined by the uh, women's head coach of the Wildcats, Steve Brooks and coach will we'll put a quick wrap on the regular season because uh, uh, we want to talk about the postseason and big victory here at home against Bethel in just a minute. But uh, um, you guys had won five straight, but I know you didn't feel you were really going in that final regular season game playing on all cylinders and we kind of saw that against St. Francis a long scoreless streak um, so it was a tough way to kind of end the regular season but I thought you rebounded pretty well in the first game of the conference tournament. Yeah the uh, St. Francis game was a rather frustrating game in mm -hmm. a lot of ways um, and you know offensively we had our moments where we we did very well and then we had our moments where we were non-existent mm -hmm. um, but I think the thing that uh, was the most concerning was again our uh, lack of defensive pressure, uh, our ability to keep the ball out of certain areas uh, that we had, you know, set a goal to try to keep it from getting into the post that easily, that kind of thing, and we just didn't do a very good job of that, and because of that, they they knocked us off. Well. That set up a first-round matchup in the in the in the postseason tournament, which seems almost impossible. I believe we're already talking postseason now; it's already here. But you take on a Bethel team uh, uh, who loves to shoot the three. Nobody hits more threes or had hit more threes in terms of uh, conference play this year than Bethel. So I think you knew you had to defend a three, but uh, they have a ability to, to do some damage inside as well. Their big kids have gotten better. That's uh, Savannah Black from yeah. Northwood High School who knocked down that 15-footer. She's really improved during the course of the season. There was a nice find inside against their zone. We were uh, fortunate we got a couple of those. Or Carly hits one mm -hmm. from the corner uh, out of bounds play. Now did their zone uh, it seemed to affect you guys in the first quarter. I thought you adapted better after that. Um, yeah, I think that, um, I think initially we were probably a little nervous. Mm -hmm. There's a lot riding. They, they heard us uh, all night on uh, little slips mm -hmm. to the basket, screens like that. There was a nice cut by Michelle and a good find and a layup. Well, we're in the first quarter here. Bethel uh, took the early lead in the first quarter, 12 to nine. Um, and you saw Angelique Moore with the little runner there. The second quarter though, that was a big quarter for you guys. As we move in the second quarter, you really start to, 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 to catch fire offensively. We see Carly hit the three there. And then uh, Tori Kraft, number 42, man, she had a huge ball game for you guys, didn't she? Yes, she did. Um, she was a difference maker for us in a lot of ways. We. Uh, uh, and, and we needed every point. Um, you know, she was able to play through the middle of the zone and, and knock down that mid-range mm -hmm. shot, and, and that was big for us in the game. Well, she had what, 20, 23, 23 points. I think. Yeah. Uh, half of those had to come from that little mid-range jumper from kind of around the free throw line, I would think. Yeah, she uh, she did a good job finding the hole, uh, and then she has the ability to do that right there, and uh, you know that was something that really hurt their defense. 
in the second quarter. You ha you hold them to 11 points. Not, uh, I think anytime you can hold a team to 11 points in a quarter, you got to be playing some pretty good defense, I would think. Uh, we did at times, yeah. um, but like right there, we went behind the screen, and then you know we give Swihart an open look at a three. You know, uh, that kind of stuff is what's frustrating to me. Saw the nice feed inside to Nicole Ignacek, one of your freshmen. Right. I, I, I know you like to put the uh, the onus on your seniors and upperclassmen, but you got Nicole in there a little bit early, and uh, um, uh, some of your young players like Nicole, they've attributed themselves extremely well during the course of the season. That shows a lot of faith in them. Yeah, well, um, she has really made some major improvement during the course of practice, so she earned the right to do that. There we don't get back in transition, we turn it over and give them an easy two. So, yeah, we, we, that was a nice play, it was yeah. a big play at a critical time, mm -hmm. um, just to try to keep them at bay. There we fronted too far out and didn't have any pressure on the ball, and now they lob it inside for a, a wide open layup. Again, you guys, though, you go back to, to, to Tori, and uh, I knew she was shooting the ball well, but I, at, at the end of the game, I looked down at my score sheet, and she didn't miss a shot all night. I mean, she was 10 for 10 from the field. She hit the one three-point shot she attempted. She hit both of her free throws. I know that play, though, frustrates you. Yeah, it <laughs> that, does. The, the loose ball. And, well, we don't come up with a rebound. We got them <laughs> blocked out, but we don't pursue the ball. And, so then Savannah beats us to the ball and gets a layup out of it, and that's frustrating. But uh, I guess when you see a player though like Tori, okay, ob it's it's obvious at this point she is uh, she's got a good feel for the game. She's shooting the ball well. I mean, you, you, you tell your players find Tori. Well, we or at told least get the ball through her. Yeah, we wanted to play through her in the middle of the floor. They were they were letting it, you know, leaving her open, and so we were saying, hey, let's let's play through the middle. I mean, uh, I don't think, I think my wife could have figured that out. So. <laughs> there again, um, you know, we stand there and let her shoot a three right in our face. And, you know, that's the stuff that we cannot do uh, tomorrow night. Yeah. Well, we're going to talk about that game coming up uh, against Bethel. I think Carly, she had a pretty good game from three-point range. She was four for ten. Maybe more importantly, some of the threes she hit were, were pretty timely. Yes. Uh, and uh, as you're kind of winding down the, 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 uh, the game here, you know, moving into the fourth quarter, I thought the key was you had a lead. Bethel made some runs at you, but you never let them tie the ball game up or get a lead back and get that level of confidence in their game. Right, and, and that was big. We, we had some timely um, threes just like that one where mm -hmm. it, it kept them from feeling like, okay, we're back in this. Mm -hmm. Now. There you see uh, the final score, 62-49. Uh, you used to always say kind of a goal or a team goal defensively is to hold a team under 50. You do that. So I guess that's still a team goal. But uh, yeah. um, uh, I know you think, one, you can play better defensively, and two, you're probably going to have to play better defensively against Goshen because Goshen is big, they're physical, they can really do some damage offensively. Yes, they can, and they did against Huntington. And... Uh, after our last game here at home, I'm sure they're going to mm -hmm. be waiting in the parking lot for us to get off the bus, so we're going to have to be ready. Speaking of that last game, during the regular season, you split with Goshen. Uh, they got you at their place here. Um, your team was shooting the ball extremely well. They did not play very well. You basically, I mean, it was a blowout win that I think surprised a lot of people. And so that certainly has got to be some motivation for them to try to get back at you for that game. Yeah, we held them to 13 points in the first half. Mm -hmm. I, I say we held them, that's probably a misnomer. Mm -hmm. They missed some shots, but they only scored 13 in the mm -hmm. first half. And, um, you know, we held them to 40 points for the game. And that was their lowest point total of the year. So I'm mm -hmm. sure they're going to be ready to prove us. Well, and they're number two seed for a reason. They've, they've had a great year, probably as good a year they've had in women's basketball in a long time, so they have a lot to go for. Goshen's never really an easy place to play, but that's where you're going to go, and it should be uh, uh, just another opportunity to, to play on Monday if you can win that one. Yeah, and that's where we're looking at it right now. We've got to take them one at a time, and we get to play again, and that was the most important part of, of Tuesday was making sure we get a chance to play again. So. All right. Well, Coach, thanks again for stopping by. And 
We'll uh, be watching the Lady Wildcats on Friday night up at Goshen. Should be a great one. Thank well, you. As we said, the Wildcats do advance to the uh, semifinals and uh, when, uh, the, against Goshen. That'll be on Friday night. There you see the semifinal game Friday, February 26th. Number 19, Ida View, against number 15, Goshen. Game time at 7 o'clock. Well, when we come back, men's basketball head coach Greg Tonigal comes in to talk about the end of their regular season and the Crossroads League play. So stay tuned. We'll be right back. Well, welcome back to Wildcat Week. The number four ranked Wildcats hosted the number three ranked Cougars of St. Francis on Saturday, February the 20th. It was a battle for the Crossroads League regular season championship. Well, St. Francis built and uh, trailed two nothing, but they built a, a 13 nothing, excuse me, went on a 13 0 run, gave them a 22 to 11 lead midway through the first half. Now it was uh, the Cougars never trailed from that point. The Wildcats closed within four points at one time. It was 22 to 18, but St. Francis used their second big run of the first half to build a game high 22 point lead of 44 to 22 with just uh, minutes before halftime. Now uh, IW was able to chip away at that deficit and cut to single digits 60 to 51 on a four point play from junior Bob Peters. Uh, that was with less than 11 minutes in the game. The closest the Wildcats uh, came in the second half was five points. That happened two times. The final of those came on a rebound and a bucket by sophomore Jacob Johnson. That was a, made the game 64 to 59 with 619 to go. Then junior Lane McHearn fouled out with a little over five minutes to play with the Wildcats trailing by five. The rest of the game saw the Cougars outscoring the Wildcats 23 to 15 to pull away for a final score and the victory 87 to 74. The Wildcats were held to just 35% shooting for the game and just 27% in the first half. Lane Meheran did lead the way for the Wildcats. He had 21 points and six rebounds for the Cougars. Austin Fox had all players with 28 points and 14 boards. Well, uh, with that regular season coming to close, the all-conference, uh, all Crossroads League teams were announced. And for the men's basketball team, senior Johnny Marlin, junior Lane Meheran, they were both named to the all-league first team, while junior Bob Peters was voted onto the all-Crossroads League second team, as well as the all-defensive team. Finally, sophomore Grant Evans made the all-Crossroads League newcomer team. So four Wildcats on those teams. Well, now joining me now for... Uh, a little bit is the head basketball coach of the Wildcats, Coach Greg Tonigal. And uh, Coach, uh, we got to talk a little bit about the St. Francis game. We thought we'd be talking about the first round of the uh, Crossroads game, but those were uh, postponed due to sure. due the weather. But uh, um, we'll talk. We'll get to that in a minute. Um, a lot of hype going into that uh, St. Francis game, and it should have been. I mean, the top two teams in the conference, a lot on the line. Um, not the most opportune time for, for, for the Wildcats just to, to go really cold from the field, especially in the first half. I guess, did St. Francis do anything defensively to influence that, do you think, or just a little bit of both? Or, I mean, they're you know, good, and they're yeah. really good, and they obviously show they're much better than us right now. Um, and so you got to give them credit for what they did to us. You know, obviously, I didn't think we played well, and there's some certain, certainly some things if we could go back, I think we could do better. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, they outplayed us on both ends. They were much more physical than us. And I mean, it is what it is. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's what we said at the end of the game. They just, they beat us and they beat us up physically. And, you know, if we want to get better and change things and make a run in the postseason, then those are things we're going to have to change. You know, I thought first <clears throat> half, uh, uh, we know what Fox is going to do in, in, in line hoop and some of these guys. But Evan Henry kind of came out of nowhere. And his threes, I thought, were huge because it really – kind of opened things up for them, gave them a cushion. Um, he didn't do that much in the second half, but first half, those threes were just ginormous. Well, Han did the same thing. Han yeah. went three for three. I mean, they made, yes. they made shots, and then they're really going right now. They can, they can beat you inside and out. And, uh, you know, you couple that with, with our 27% shooting. Mm -hmm. and Shoot, we were lucky to be down 22, <laughs> as bad as that sounds. There are not many times you go into the locker room at the half when you're watching a game or calling a game and you think the team that's down by 22 still has a chance. Uh, quite frankly, I mean, just being honest. Um, uh, but you guys gave <clears throat> yourself a chance. You made a run, you got it down to five. Um, uh, I thought maybe the key was that, you know, 
did pick it up defensively a little bit. But then Lane was, I mean, he was working hard. Other guys were working hard. Um, but to cut the lead to five, that took a big effort. Yeah. I mean, the one thing our guys didn't do was quit. They mm -hmm. kept fighting, and we cut it to five. You know, and Lane fouls out, mm -hmm. which, which hurt us at that yeah. point. But they kept battling, and, you know, they made it somewhat interesting. So, yeah. I mean, you'd like to forget that first half and focus on some of the things we did well in the second half. Um, let's talk about what's coming up, though. In, in next is the first round of the Crossroads League tournament. Um, uh, you take on a Huntington team that uh, you swept this season, but they're always dangerous because they always have – some shooters and they're always going to play hard so uh that'll be a big game uh in lucky arena i mean we say this all the time and i don't, I don't think it's just coaches speak but there mm -hmm. are no easy games yeah. in this league and so yeah. if you walk into a game thinking you know we got a higher seed we're going to win this oh, game yeah. you'll find out otherwise and they got some great players daniel wool mm -hmm. you know he if they have more success he's he's in the talk for the conference player of the yeah. year just yeah. in terms of what he did individually so this is a dangerous team and we're yeah. going to have to really improve i mean there's things that we've been working on for the last couple of weeks that I really want to see get better, and uh, mm -hmm. it's going to have to happen tonight. It seems like no matter the sport or the no matter the level of basketball, uh, when you get into postseason play, a lot of things have to come together. But one constant, one consistent is teams that play great defense, they tend to win championships. And, and we've seen some really good defense from you guys this year, and we've seen some lapses at times. Mm -hmm. um, I would imagine that's got to be a message you're trying to set to your squad. We have got to come ready to play on the defense. Back. Yeah, we've said it in a, in a variety of ways. Yeah. I mean, there's only certain, there's only so many ways you can say it until somebody <coughs> steps up and says, okay, we're going we're gonna to start to impose our will mm -hmm. on people and not just take it. And, you know, we're running out of time, and there's a sense of urgency, and, and our hope is that our guys realize that because the potential's there. Mm -hmm. You know, I just continue to refuse to accept that we're a poor defensive team. We're – We've shown we can be good. Mm -hmm. Now we just got to do stretches of it. All right. Well, Coach, uh, best of luck to you guys. And, again, as we said, the first round of the Crossroads League Tournament for the Wildcats tonight, Thursday, February the 25th, in Lucky Arena, as we said, they'll host the Foresters of Huntington University. Well, when we come back, we'll catch, uh, excuse me, check in with uh, uh, track and field, see how that indoor season is coming to a close. We'll have the head coach, of the track and field team, John Foss, along with senior Allison Trevith, Allison Trevithick, and she'll talk about the NCCAA National Championship. So don't go away, we'll be right back. Well, welcome back to Wildcat Week. The 24 ranked Lady Wildcats softball team began their season on Saturday, February the 20th in Westfield, Indiana. They took on NCAA Division II St. Joseph's out of Rensselaer, Indiana. Well, in the first game, Indiana Wesleyan scored five runs in the top of the first inning, but St. Joe's cut into that lead with three runs in the bottom part of that same inning. St. Joseph's scored two more runs in the third to tie the score at five apiece. Then in the end, St. Joseph's came out on top in that first game by a final score of 12 to nine. Well, in the second game, the Wildcats scored four runs in each of the first two innings for an early eight to nothing advantage. It was 9-2 following three innings, and a single run in the sixth inning gave the Lady Wildcats an eight-run cushion for the Mercy Roll victory. Final score on that one, 10-2. Well, from the softball field, we move to the baseball field, where the Wildcats start, have started off the season extremely well as they travel to Westfield, Indiana, to take on IU Southeast on Tuesday, February the 23rd. In game one of a doubleheader, IU Southeast handed the Wildcats their first loss of the season by a final score of six to three. Then in game number two, the Wildcats score all three of their runs in the second inning to come away with a victory over the Grenadiers. Final score in game number two, three to one. The softball team will travel to New Albany, Indiana to play in the IU Southeast Invitational on Friday, February the 26th against Cardinal Stritch and IU Southeast. Well, moving now from outdoor sports to indoor sports, the NCCAA National Championships were hosted here at IWU at the Troy Fieldhouse. And joining me now to talk about that meet is the head coach of the track and field team at Indiana Wesleyan, John Foss, and senior Allison Trevithick. And uh, mm -hmm. coach, um, uh, indoor meet, we've talked about it before, uh, uh, 
indoor track and field. Mm -hmm. um, it's good preparation. Your ultimate goals come in the outdoor season, but uh, not a bad day, not a bad uh, performance by your squad. You had four champions, 16 All-Americans, so pretty good meet. That was a great start, and we really used this meet to qualify for the NAI National Indoor Championships, and that, that worked for us this weekend. We had a lot of qualifiers, and and great individual performances. One of those great individual performers here with us, Allison Trevithick, uh, senior from down in Mitchell, Indiana, and uh, high jump, that's kind of your sport. Um, uh, I don't know if you kind of had a goal going into this, but I should tell everyone, you know, he set a school record with that indoor jump, five, if I got it right, five feet, seven and three quarter inches, but it was a meet record as well. So you had to feel pretty good about that day. Yes, uh, this being only my third meet of the season, I missed the first two meets. Um, I didn't come in with any high expectations, um, but it definitely turned out to be a good meet. So, yeah. you know, for you, Alice, what is the key? Do you ever come into a day like just like I think I feel pretty good? I think I'm gonna do well, or is there a key to jumping well? Is it speed? Is it technique? Is it power? Or is it just everything coming together at once? Mm -hmm. It's definitely a combination of all of the above, but I'd say it's a combination of a lot of things. Um, it surprises me. I didn't feel very good coming into the meet on Saturday, mm -hmm. and something clicked, something worked. So you never really know about high jump because it's sort of a game of luck and yeah. a little bit of skill. Well, Coach, um, with your performers, uh, performances here, I don't know how many uh, athletes. Do you know how many athletes are going to go to NAI Nationals now? I do. We have 12 men and 8 women. Okay, so 20 athletes all together. Mm -hmm, correct. That's coming up May the 3rd through the 5th down in Johnson City, Tennessee. Again, that'll be the NAI Indoor Nationals. Uh, again, a meet where you'd like to see if you get, get some All-Americans, uh, uh, set some new uh, records and all those kinds of things. But again, still a build-up, I guess, for the outdoor season? Well, it's a transition, I think, but uh -huh. uh, the outdoor is what we focus on. Having said that, um, we are positioned really well in this meet. Um, all of the athletes that are going are, uh, everybody's ranked in the top 20, mm -hmm. most are ranked in the top 10, uh, and there are some, like Allison, who are ranked very high mm -hmm. and, and have an opportunity to do some pretty special things. And a lot of the athletes, obviously, you'll see indoor meet, you're going to see later on in the year, so kind of know where you can stack up. Absolutely. Want to mention a couple other folks. Mike Moffat, of course, in the men's high jump. He he was national championship, six feet nine and three quarters inches there. Brennan Coyle, a freshman, yeah. he had a big day in the shot put for you. I think he was a little bit of a surprise for you guys. Brennan's been a terrific, certainly a talented high school athlete. So in a sense, not a surprise, but he is actually improving by uh, one to two feet every time he competes. Wow. And Coach Abney's doing a fantastic job with him as always and he's responding very well. Mason DePeel in the heptathlon. Um, I think he won actually, actually won three of the seven events and scored well in the others. He had a great day. He had a fantastic day. And last year he missed this meet the, in, the, in the hep. They only take the top 16. He missed by one spot. Mm. And so he was motivated this yeah. year in every event, gave it everything he had, and, and clearly is on his way to um, competing very well at, at NEIs. Well, we talked about the NAI Indoor Nationals. Then after that, Allison, you guys will head outside and you head down to uh, Wake Forest to kick the season off. It's gotta be, uh, I know competing indoor is fun, but to get outside, that, that, that's gotta be uh, just more energizing, a lot more fun, I would imagine. Mm -hmm. There's definitely a lot more on your mind going yeah. into an outdoor meet because you have the weather to take in consider mm -hmm. consideration and kind of a new pool of um, talent to compete against. After that, Coach, when's the first home meet then? Uh, actually, we go to Wake Forest the 19th and 20th, mm -hmm. and then a Thursday night before Easter, we have the Polar Bear Invitational mm -hmm. here at home, uh, like around starting around, I think, probably 5 o'clock. Okay. So just four or five days after we get back from beautiful, sunny Wake Forest, it'll be Indiana in March, and who knows? Yeah, it could be, it could be 70 <laughs> or it could be 30. We'll find out, yeah, I guess. Absolutely. <laughs> All right, well, guys, thanks so much for stopping in. Good luck to you down at NA Nationals, okay? Thank you. Thanks, Roger. All right. Well, that's all we have for you on this episode of Wildcat Week. If you have any comments or suggestions about our show, we'd like to hear from you. You can visit our website, WIWTV.com. There you can watch past episodes and connect with us online. Once again, that's WIWUTV.com. Well, we look forward to being back with you next time. So for all of us here, thanks for watching Wildcat Week. <laughs>